Number 8. Alien Mummy Found in a Cave in Peru Peru has been made famous by its intricate Nazca lines that depict animals and elaborate shapes, but could a recent discovery give clues about who, or what, made these iconic lines? Recently, a local villager was traveling across the Nazca Plateau when he came across a mysterious cave. Even though he'd been exploring the area and its inhospitable mountains for years, he had only read about the caves. When he finally discovered the hidden entrance, he realized he had stumbled across something that had ties to the region's ancient civilization. Carefully making his way inside down claustrophobic tunnels into a spacious hall, the man soon realized this was no ordinary cave. It was a tomb. And inside, there were two sarcophagi, one that was filled with various priceless objects, but it was the second sarcophagus that shocked the man. Inside, he found two medium-sized mummies and a number of small humanoid mummies. Only a few blurry photographs of the humanoids exist, maybe because the man who found them was so worried that the Peruvian government would find the location of the cave and remove both the sensational beings and their sarcophagi. The photos that do exist show one of the humanoid creatures dressed in golden body armor and gold bracelets. Another had been laid on the ground on top of some sort of white powder. Whatever the creatures are and wherever the beings are from, is it possible they are the ones who created the infamous Nazca lines? Was it to show their kind where they were located or to share their knowledge of the flora and fauna of Peru? Unless the unnamed villager shares more of his knowledge of what it is he found, no one will ever know for sure what mysteries remain in this controversial potential discovery perhaps made inside the Peruvian cave. Number 7. First Mercury Poisoning Call it a cold case of the oldest kind, European researchers studying a set of 5,000-year-old bones have discovered what they believe is the first case of mercury poisoning. While working with bones unearthed from 23 different archaeological sites across Spain and Portugal, researchers found that many of the bones had unusually high levels of mercury poisoning, levels they say could not have come from one's diet alone. So what does that mean? Were these ancient people poisoned? After the analysis was complete, scientists shared their results. The bones had mercury levels of up to 400 parts per million. The normal rate found in remains of this type would ordinarily be around 1 or 2 parts per million. And the culprit, according to experts, was something known as the mineral cinnabar. Cinnabar is a toxic mercury sulfide that can be ground into a fine powder that was once used to make paint pigments. One of the largest cinnabar mines just happens to be in Spain, where some of these bones were discovered. The highest levels of cinnabar were found in bones that dated back to around between 2900 BC and 2300 BC, which was the late Neolithic to the Middle Copper Age. During this time, cinnabar was considered a rare substance that was traded and used in ritual practices. It was also used to paint tombs, to decorate figurines, and even deliberately spread over the dead to consecrate them. So whether it was in their daily lives or during ritualistic ceremonies, the people of Spain and Portugal inhaled or consumed large amounts of cinnabar, something that has remained with them even after death. Number 6. Killer Algae over the last 540 million years, there have been five mass extinction events that killed off from 50 to 90% of animal species, with asteroids or volcanic eruptions taking a blame. Now, a new study shows that something much smaller may have played a role in these events, something that still lurks underfoot. A primitive type of algae has been studied by researchers, and now they think the plant life may have had a hand in at least one of these mass extinctions. But how could something as small as algae be to blame for killing off countless animals? Even though algae are a simple organism that gets nourishment from the sun, they could also produce harmful toxins. And one particular group of algae called dinoflagellates can release a type of neurotoxin that attacks nerve cells. When there is an abundance of nutrients in the water, algae are known to grow rapidly. These algae blooms can have a huge impact on the local ecosystem, 
Just think about what a massive explosion of toxic algae would have been able to do to the ancient fish, birds, marine mammals, and people. But it takes more than just a simple algae bloom to kill, even a large one. Stresses including a change in the salinity of the water, and even changes in temperature, can make the toxins stronger when they're released. So it makes sense that during a time of upheaval in the planet's atmosphere, these toxins may have exploded, ultimately harming the plant and animal life. Even though some scientists are skeptical that simple algae could have caused a mass extinction, they do agree that the inhospitable environment caused by toxic algae could have been one of many contributing factors to these catastrophic events. Number 5. Ancient Stone Tools in the mountains of central Mexico, controversy is unfolding with the discovery of hundreds of ancient stone tools whose presence could change the timeline of human evolution. They were discovered in the Chiquihuite Cave in the Estillero Mountains and could prove that humans arrived in North America around 15,000 years earlier than previously thought. Almost 2,000 stone tools were uncovered, 239 of which were embedded in layers of gravel, which archaeologists carbon dated to determine that the gravel was between 25,000 and 32,000 years old. But the site was a large one, and with not that many of these old tools found there, researchers think that the site was only an occasional stopover for ancient humans. During the last ice age, some 26,000 years ago, intense blizzards would have made travel treacherous for early humans looking to move through North America. The Chiquihuite Cave would have been a welcome refuge for those looking for shelter. There is still some controversy surrounding the tools, though. Some experts think burrowing animals or geological activity could have shifted the tools deeper, making them seem older than they truly are. Others think these activities may have chipped away the edges of some of the stones, making them look like tools chiseled by the hands of ancient humans. But for the objects that had become embedded in an impenetrable layer of mud formed during the last ice age, those tools really are tens of thousands of years old. It's going to take more in-depth study to figure out if humans spread across North America earlier than most historians believe, but if these tools have anything to say about it, their discovery completely rewrites the timeline of early human presence in the Americas. Do you think it's possible that the tools discovered shifted lower into the Earth somehow? Or were humans in North America far earlier than we imagined? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 4. The Tong Child is it possible that the missing link between humans and apes was discovered back in 1925 in a limestone quarry in South Africa? One man thinks so, but his discovery still has paleontologists arguing over whether or not his theory is correct. Raymond Dart was an anatomist at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Over the course of 73 days, Dart worked to remove the hard rock surrounding a fossil that was brought to him from the limestone stone quarry. As he did, he realized he had something remarkable. The skull of an ape-like being that he believed was the missing link between primates and humans, now known as Australopithecus africanus. Excited about his find, Dart sent photographs and details of the fossilized skull to Nature, a well-respected scientific journal published since the late 1800s in England. Then a journalist with an affinity for fossils came asking questions. Initially, Dart was careful about sharing it with the world, but after the journalist promised to hold off on his story, Dart couldn't resist and he shared a copy of his paper on the skull as well as the photographs he'd taken of his incredible discovery. But the story never surfaced in nature, and when Dart contacted them to find out why, he found his discovery was considered so unprecedented that they had sent Dart's findings to other experts for review. The article was eventually published, but the details of the fossil were debated between scientists. Some thought the fossil might have belonged to an immature ape and not a human. They also felt that the features were so similar to immature gorillas and chimpanzees that Australopithecus should be placed in the same group. 
One reason experts were initially skeptical was because they wanted to know more about the conditions where the fossil was found. They also needed to examine the teeth more closely to get a better picture of its origin. Another reason they were skeptical was that the skull showed that Australopithecus stood upright long before they had large brains. Up until the discovery, scientists thought that the brains of hominins expanded first, long before they evolved to walk upright on two feet instead of all four limbs. It would take decades for the truth about Australopithecus to be clarified, and after much study, Australopithecus was finally recognized as a hominin, with Dart's discovery of the small skull becoming a very important missing link in the progression of ancestors to modern humans. Number 3 Oldest Burial in Africa The Panga Yasaidi Cave in Africa is a stunning site with massive towering cliffs, but a discovery at the mouth of the cave is even more fascinating. A burial that has given archaeologists a glimpse into the social behaviors of early Homo sapiens. The buried remains of a 2.5 to 3 year old child in the cave located on the Kenyan coast is one of the earliest signs of modern human behavior. Initially, archaeologists only found a few portions of the child's bones in 2013. It would take almost five years to unearth the small pit where the child was buried. The pit had been dug about almost 10 feet below the surface, but researchers weren't sure what they'd found until much later. Using plaster to stabilize the remains, experts took the bones back to a lab where they were analyzed. There, they discovered two teeth, which they later realized belonged to a 2.5 to 3-year-old human child. But that was only the first in a number of intriguing finds. Further exploration led experts to parts of the child's skull and face, with more teeth still in place. They also found the spine and ribs still remarkably well preserved, meaning the body had been undisturbed for thousands of years before being discovered. The soil around the body showed that the child had been buried shortly after dying and that he was lying left on one side. The position of his head also showed that at one time, a type of pillow had been under his head. All these details show that he had been covered in a shroud in some sort of ancient funerary rite. The fact that the child had been buried 78,000 years ago made it the oldest known human burial in Africa. Stone tools buried at the same level indicate that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals both treated their dead with honor in this way. Early evidence of burials are rare in Africa, meaning experts don't know much about how early people interacted with the dead. But this one discovery gave them a new perspective on how early humans may have started modern burial rituals we're familiar with today. Number 2. Horn Giants in 1916, an announcement in the New York Times set off a firestorm of controversy. The report claimed that two professors and a reverend had uncovered a horned skull in a burial mound in Pennsylvania. But the strange skull wasn't the only thing in the burial mound on the Murray farm. The remains of 68 men were also located, supposedly buried around 1200 AD. Locating the burial mound was an exciting find, but the remains were something that no one had ever seen before, with each of the bodies stretching more than seven feet tall. The newspaper article claimed that large stone kilts, which are polished New Stone Age axes, were also found in the pit. More stunning was the reveal that the skulls had strange protuberances on their foreheads. Is it possible the bones belong to ancient giants? If so, what were they doing in the middle of a field in Pennsylvania. This wasn't the first time a supposed giant was found in the state. In 1822, an eight-foot-tall Native American skeleton was found in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. As time went on, the story of the discovery on Murray Farm became legend, with tales that giants roamed the land before modern humans. But all it took was a little more digging to discover the truth behind the claims. While the bodies were first being excavated, one of the men found a bundle containing deer antlers that just happened to be above one of the skeleton's heads. Someone decided to play a joke by claiming the horns had at one time been attached to the skull. As for their height, the skeleton ended up being only about six feet, which may have seemed somewhat gigantic to Europeans who were mostly around five foot six. So 
even though the story about giants in America might have been a series of miscommunications, excitement, or just the result of a prank, the discovery of the Stone Age axes still gave archaeologists something they could marvel over, even if they were never wielded by horn giants. Number 1. Lost City of Honduras what would make archaeologists angry about the discovery of an ancient lost city? And what does it have to do with the National Geographic Society? Leaders in both scientific exploration and education, the organization is known all over the world for their celebration and protection of wildlife, oceans, and ancient heritage. But when they published a story about an ancient lost city in Honduras, researchers, archaeologists, and scholars were angry enough to write a public letter condemning the announcement. So what made them so angry? It all started when rumors stirred of a lost city in Honduras, one that had been whispered about between explorers and aviators since the 1900s. But no one seemed to have ever traveled there, turning the fabled city into legend without anyone ever seeing it. That is until 2012 when a team of archaeologists returned to the area where the city was supposedly located. Armed with high-tech equipment, they flew overhead, tracing a virtual terrain of the area. But far below in the rolling hills and sloping ridges, they spotted a basin, as well as a rectangular shape that looked distinctly man-made. After sending a team to survey the area on foot, they found 50 objects, including the carved stone they had seen from the air. Estimates placed it as originating between 1000 AD and 1400 AD, the same time the famed lost city would have been at its most prosperous. So why all the anger about the National Geographic pieces? Other historians had worked with the local Tawaka people for decades, doing their best to share their knowledge of the area and to keep the rights and traditions of the people who still live there from being lost. The National Geographic portrayal of this so-called lost city seemed to completely ignore the fact that people had been living in the area all along, and considering them as a type of sunken treasure made their hard work to maintain their way of life seem trivial. You would think that the reveal of a previously lost city would spark interest and intrigue. Instead, it seems that nothing was lost, and instead, maybe the people of Honduras were simply ignored until explorers wanted to take credit for discovering something that was always there, had they looked hard enough. Thanks for watching our video. Which one of these controversial discoveries did you find the strangest or most fascinating? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more incredible, unusual, and controversial discoveries like these. See you next time, and goodbye.